experience was an embodied experience, an ergonomic experience. It was something that was taken into account in the early uh, days of interface design. And so we have these you know, fully embodied notions of the user experience. And, and, and that's all in the background of my discussion. An example that I'm going to use to sort of talk about these you know, varied uh, modes of, uh, of, of reading activity that we encounter on a regular basis. So again, totally banal, totally familiar, open up the times, business day, technology. What do you do first? Well, you see, you know, you, you have all this, this, this stuff. You just sort of bracket out. Like my frame says, I'll oh, bracket that, bracket that, bracket that. I'm just going to look at this story, right? So the ads and the menu bars and the navigation devices, it's like I know they're there, but I'm one subject of this interface situation being produced as, you know, the Mr. Campbell sort of surrogate. <coughs> okay, so I'm sort of immersed in Mr. Campbell's reality and watching this thing show me where my eye tracking is going and so forth. Okay, so that's the and affordances in which my sense of self, reader, producer, is constituting this reading performance that is, in fact, you know, this, this kind of space. It's an interface, uh, you know, it's a space of interface in which the acts of production are indeed constructing um, a read of red text, a red environment. It's not that the text doesn't exist, it's just that it's not there in advance of that performance. A relationship, a particular temporal experience. And, and that's really, you know, again, what I'm trying to, uh, to sketch out. So what organizes these relational experiences, the things that let us cross over these different modalities to jump um, across these different frames, again, the literal frames, the wire frames, but really the cognitive frames of chunks of experience in these different modes. Um, I would say that in this particular environment, again, here's a you know, fairly easy example of, of this multimodal environment. But in this um, it, it environment, experience doesn't have a kind of a priori unifying ground on which the different fragments, chunks, and elements relate. Um, the exterior frame of a graphic novel, for instance, um, is a defining frame. It delimits its boundaries. You know, this is a, a whole order of things more complex than what McLeod is talking about. Um, so we don't have a delimiting boundary. We don't have a delimiting frame. We always have to figure out where, where is the frame? What frame are we within? What frame have we crossed over? So we're reading across a multiplicity of worlds, multiplicity of phenomena, kinds of borders of representations and arguments and presentations, in other words, across a whole range of media modalities. So the ways that we make the connections across these disparities is very different than if we work within a single delimited frame. Even in, and even that is complicated. Film text is extremely complicated but delimited frame. So the points of connection, again, I would say are probably best de described in some combination of mathematical, and mathematical figures and architectural metaphors. Nodes, edges, tangents, trajectories, hinges, spans, pipelines, and portals. Um, and again, this is not the language of old media transferred to the new. Um, it's not a language that comes out of the theories of montage, um, editing, pastiche, allegory, or appropriation. But instead, I think these are, what we have to look for are structuring principles, um, ways in which we can think about the nature of interface as an experience of reading. And I think we would all agree that reading was always a performance of a text or a work. A text doesn't exist in a static state. Um, it's always an act of remaking through an act of instantiation. But reading didn't have to grapple with these kinds of extremes of omniscience and immersion um, as it does more experiencing, say, a first-person view of a video juxtaposed with the manipulation of a scalable map, or watching it, a social network reconfigure itself around a node of discourse, even as that node is changing and our sense of relationship to the node. So the dynamic nature of, of the interface environment reconfigures our relationship to the act of reading, but it really reconstitutes us in a very different way as subjects. Um, Donald Hoffman um, has a, a theory he refers to as the interface theory of perception, a cognitive studies um, uh, scholar. And in Hoffman's constructivist approach, he outlines perception as a constitutive act, um, countering traditions of, of, of notions of perception as our species' ability to address the true properties of the world, classify its structure, and evolve our senses to this end. And he says, no, 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 all those things are wrong. He says, what we do is, that we, we really have to understand perception as a species-specific user interface that guides
guides our behavior. And again, he's really trying to push towards a constructivist model of how we understand what that behavioral agent is, who we are, that we are not consumer users outside of experience, but the experience and these affordances of new media environments, web environments, constitute us in a codependent relation. And again, it's, it's something whose affordances and specificities, um, I think we have the, the challenge of beginning to understand and articulate. So I will stop there and, uh, and stop. <laughs>